Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my favorite new feature of Gigabyte's uh, Z, well, high-end Z590 motherboards. Um, and before we get into this, uh, Gigabyte did send me a bunch of Z590 boards. They sent me a Z590 uh, Extreme, uh, a Master, and a Tachyon, and an Elite. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's your full disclosure. Um, that They just sort of sent me a bunch of boards. Um, but this is also a feature that I basically requested that they add to the boards, so, you know, it kind of makes sense that I'm really excited about it. Um, and so we're going to take a look at how it works. And there are other motherboards from, like, Asus, MSI has this as well, on some motherboards. Um, and they also have it, like, on, on Z490 boards as well, but the, the, well, Gigabyte doesn't, right? Like, Gigabyte added this to their Z590 series. Um, but basically, this feature is the main reason that, like, if you're going to be doing a 10th gen uh, Intel CPU build with a Gigabyte motherboard, especially if you're considering a high-end one, um, in my opinion, you should get a Z590 instead of a Z490 because the memory overclocking between them, in my experience, is the same. And from talking to Gigabyte, they basically told me that they just copied the memory training stuff from the Z490 BIOS to the Z590 BIOS. So uh, in terms of memory overclocking capabilities, the Z490 and the Z590 boards from Gigabyte are basically exactly the same when it comes to 10th gen CPUs and the like mainstream BIOS releases, the Z490 boards do have a few like extreme overclocking optimized BIOSes, but if, if you're using the mainstream BIOSes, there's really no difference in my experience in terms of the memory overclocking. But the big difference is that the Z590 boards have this extra functionality right here, which you do not get on the Z490 boards, and that is that you can set the reset switch on um, the Ultra, the Master, and the Extreme to function as a safe mode button. Um, which you can also get on, like, MSI has a jumper for that functionality on the Z490 Unify. I think also the Ace then, because the Unify is based on the Ace. Um, Asus has that functionality sort of implemented the same way on a lot of the, like, Maximus boards. Um, but um, I think Gigabyte actually has this on the cheapest motherboard. Or maybe the Unify. I think the Unify and the Ultra from Gigabyte, like, the Unify and Ultra are about tied on price point off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, what that does is it gives you a safe mode button. Um, unfortunately, the way Gigabyte has this implemented is it really is just the button. So if you have your motherboard in a case, you're going to have to, like, if you're doing a lot of memory overclocking, you're, you're going to want to do it with the side panel removed if you actually want to take advantage of, of this functionality, because there's, there's no header anywhere on the motherboard for, for, like, hooking it up to your front panel or something. So that's a bit unfortunate, but the, the cool thing about this is that, let's say you're doing some memory overclocking, right? And, okay, we're going to do this that way. So, you're doing some memory overclocking, and this this is the main use for it, but you can use it for literally any, any like, screw-up in terms of, of BIOS settings. So, like, let's say what I'm going to do here. 1.42. Gonna go with high. Now we're gonna go there. Gonna disable this. Oh wait, no, disable that. Um, and then let's say, for some reason, I believe that my CPU is gonna run 5.6 gigahertz on air on on water cooling, which it's not happening. <laughs> Especially not at this voltage. That's definitely not happening. And so, you know, I have these. I have these settings here. Um, they're not correct. And we're gonna save configuration and exit. And uh, it doesn't boot. To absolutely nobody's surprise. Wait. That How on earth? Okay. Wait. What? Is it because I didn't disable all the power management stuff? It's definitely because I didn't disable all the... Okay, it crashed. Point stands. You can see the th thing is not working because 5.6 gigahertz at amp. Like, I, I was expecting it to crash during the post process, but I guess it loads up the clocks at the very end of it. So anyway, we hit the, hit the reset button, which is now configured to act as a safe mode button. And... 
we wait a while because unfortunately now like it, it it's not very it's not very quick but I, it's not really very quick on any motherboard um just it's just down how to down to how this functionality is implemented so anyway now we should be back in the bios back in the bios yeah and everything's fine like all our settings are still here we didn't have to clear cmos because you know we punched in an overclock that's too high and then then like start over no um all our settings are still there uh we didn't lose any progress and so we can just kind of move on and so you can do this if you punch in the wrong cpu settings if you punch in the wrong memory settings um and it just saves you so much time especially if you're if you're messing with with memory overclocking and you know, you're messing with like RTLs and IOLs or something, which I'm probably going to do a video about how to do that on 10th gen CPUs eventually. Um, unfortunately, 11th gen CPUs, as far as I know, currently do not have support for RTLs and IOLs at all, and they might never have support for that. Um, anyway, I didn't want to go into the CPU settings, but but the thing is, is like then, then you might go and start working on your memory overclock, right? And you might try like 16, 16, 16, 28. Which, to my great surprise, this memory kit actually boots that at <laughs> 1.5 volts, which is neat. Um, it was it's almost certainly not stable. Um, but yeah, so that boots right up. And then now we're going to go to something that definitely shouldn't work. We're going to try 15, 15, 15. And so now that just loops on the 31 code. Now the 31 code with the Gigabyte Z590s, you kind of want to wait on it sometimes. You don't want to immediately go for the safe boot button because sometimes it's just the board having to train. But a lot of the time, like if it, it just keeps doing that, then yeah, you, you go for the safe mode. And you're right up back in the BIOS, and, like, at this point, we could raise the voltage to, to get the settings to work, or, like, we can fix the settings, right? We could dial back the timings or whatever. Um, so, yeah, this is super convenient, because on, on, like, Gigabyte Z490 boards, when you get into a situation where the system doesn't boot, you have two options. <laughs> One, you hope that the motherboard figures out how to recover on its own which is not a great option because that sometimes takes for literally forever. Like a lot of motherboards on certain BIOS versions, they will never ever trigger a like sort of, hey, your, your memory overclock is not stable fault detection thing. And, you know, and even when they do, like they'll wipe your BIOS settings for you, right? So it's basically like it achieves the same result. It achieve, a lot of the time it'll achieve basically the same result as if you just hit the clear CMOS button yourself. So... At that point, I don't know why you're trying to wait for the auto recovery to do anything. Um, and then the other option is, yeah, you, you can just clear the BIOS yourself. And now technically Gigabyte boards do have a uh, sort of neat thing. Um, so yeah, now it's going to just boot right up because we gave it enough voltage. But like on the Z490 boards, you do have one alternative, but it's sort of like a, a last resort backup kind of situation, which is the last known good profile, which is this right here. Um, the thing is, you don't have control over what is saved in the last known good profile. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it requires that you go all the way to Windows. Um, so you go through a full boot up cycle for, for the last known good settings to actually be set, which we can try right now. And, uh, yeah, so that, that just took us to, oh, this is the, I think this is the profile I was using for the, the VRM torture test. Yeah, this looks like the profile I was using for the VRM torture test. So that, that's the whole issue with the last known good settings is like, it's like, it'll load up something, but you don't really have control over what it, what it loads up. And so, yeah, the safe boot button, like the safe mode functionality is just so freaking awesome. Also, um, the, the reset switch, unfortunately, doesn't survive clear CMOSes. So if you do do a clear CMOS, you need to re-enable that functionality again. Or you're going to be stuck with the exact same behavior that you'd have on, like, a Z490 gigabyte board. But, you know, like, it, like once you have the safe mode set, you basically shouldn't have to hit the clear CMOS button ever. Like, there's really no reason to use it once you have safe mode, like, once you have safe mode, like, going. 
and it does save as part of your profile. So if you save it into a BIOS profile, like, yeah, like the, this is this is the best new feature on on Gigabyte Z590 boards. Um, though admittedly, it's taken like Gigabyte. Like the the thing is, at the same time, it's like I think the first motherboard I ever had with Safe Mode was a the Maximus Nine Apex. Definitely had it. Um, I can't remember if any other boards had it. Um, but yeah, so this isn't like a, this is a new feature for Gigabyte boards. It's not a new feature for, uh, other vendors. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just like, like it makes Gigabyte boards a lot nicer to work with in my opinion. So if you were already considering a Gigabyte motherboard for the feature set or something, uh, this is like the main reason to go with a Z590 instead of a Z490. So anyway, let's let's take a look at the the boards that actually have this functionality. So the extreme, obviously, you just have the reset button up over here. That's what gets rebound to the safe boot functionality. And unfortunately, there is no header, so you can't can't hook it up to your your case. Um, so you know, if you do want to use that, you'll have to do like you'll if you have your motherboard in a case, you'll have to have the side panel off to take advantage of that button. But um, yeah, if you're just working initially on a memory overclock, I guess that's not too bad for like a day or something to to, to just do it that way. Um, on the master, it's all the way down over here, uh, which is really like this button's location is super inconsistent ac across Gigabyte's lineup. So on the master, it's on the bottom edge um, and on the ultra, it's on the top edge because on the ultra down where, where the master has the reset, but like the the re like the option button. Um, which normally by default is reset. Um, the Ultra has the Q Flash Plus button down there. So on the Ultra, your reset switch is up above the memory slots. Um, and none of these boards, like the, the thing is, um, when you configure that reset button, it lit only configures the reset button. It doesn't reset the like reset, uh, reset header in your front panel header. So that's the thing is like, you do need to take the side panel off your case if you're going to like take advantage of this. And I will say like MSI just has a dedicated header for safe boot functionality, which, uh, yeah, if you have an MSI board in a case, you could just, you know, re like instead of having a reset button, you could just have a safe boot button with, with like an MSI board. But still, um, this, like, I think this is like the best new addition to Gigabyte Z590 lineup. And also when it comes to 10th gen memory overclocking, specifically on Gigabyte Z590 boards, I don't know how it is for other memory vendors. Um, and I do know like, like say even for Gigabyte, the early Z590 BIOSes were absolutely horrendous for memory overclocking. Like I couldn't get a 3600 megahertz pro, uh, XMP to work. Like, it just didn't work. <laughs> um, and, uh, but with the, with the more recent BIOSes, Gigabyte actually... Like they've basically, they straight up told me that they copied their Z490 memory training um, to the Z590 BIOSes. So, and that matches my experience. Like there's basically no difference between using a uh, regular. So like the thing is the Z490 boards do have some like extreme overclocking optimized BIOSes, which use different memory training routines. But for the, like if you're just using the BIOSes that are available directly from Gigabyte's website for the Z490 boards and the Z590 boards, the memory overclocking behavior is exactly the same in my experience. Um, and so at that point, it's just kind of like with, with Gigabyte boards right now, if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to get a 10700K, 10850K, 10900K, you know, I'd, I'd say probably 10850K or 10900K because the, even the Ultra is a bit of an expensive board, but for for pairing it with a 10700k but yeah I, i'd say 10700k on on the ultra is kind of a weird like hardware combination because this the ultra i think is like 320 dollars or something which your motherboard probably shouldn't cost more than your cpu unless you're way too into memory overclocking in which case your motherboard can cost whatever the hell you want <laughs> If you're way too into memory overclocking, all the the usual like your motherboard shouldn't cost more than nah that doesn't doesn't matter at this point like buy the buy the motherboard that you you most like uh the buy the board where you most like the behavior because having a motherboard that's like oh but it's good back like that that just drives you up the wall with with like obnoxious reset behavior or, like having to clear CMOS all the time or training is just like so not worth it in my opinion but anyway um. Yeah, so uh, where was I going with that? Yeah, so if you're getting like a 10900K and you're considering a Z490 gigabyte board that's north of $300, you should probably just get like an Ultra Z590 uh, Ultra Master or Extreme instead. Um, also, the Ultra doesn't have dual BIOS, which is also a nice, nice little benefit. 
which technically, like, that shouldn't even be an issue. The extreme does have the option to disable the automatic dual BIOS, but for whatever reason, I've had the dual BIOS still kick in anyway, even though I should have it disabled. So I don't know, maybe maybe the BIOS is like, that, that's not fully implemented in the BIOS yet. But here's the thing, if you're quick, if you're quick to use the safe mode button, that doesn't get in the way either. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna hit the backup BIOS chip if you're quick about using the safe mode button. And if you do the, all, all you really, well, you could just use the BIOS selector switch to get back to the main BIOS, or you can just power cycle the power supply, which uh, will reset the board back to the main BIOS as well. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of that. Basically, Gigabyte's Z590 motherboards are way more convenient for memory overclocking with both 10th gen and 11th gen CPUs than their, than their Z490 boards. And unlike some of the, like I've heard from some people that some Z590 boards are actually really bad at running 10th gen, even now with the more mature BIOSes. Um, so unlike a lot of the other boards, like I not noticed a memory overclocking problem with, I like with 10th gen chips on, on Gigabyte Z590 boards. Like it's basically the same as Z490. In fact, like, I'd say, in my experience, exactly the same. I've heard some people say it's actually better, but I've not really noticed that. So, um, yeah, anyway, so that, that's all I wanted to, to do in this video. Also, fun fact, is like, I think I mentioned this at the start, but the main reason we have safe mode on the Gigabyte Z590 boards is because I actually told Gigabyte, like, hey, this would be a really cool feature to have. Because um, the thing is, like, if you are messing with, say you know, something down here like the terminations or the IO latency, like the the round trip latencies or the IO latencies. These are all settings where it's very easy to get them very slightly wrong. And then the whole thing stop. like with a lot of the like, well, no, it's 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 and like any timing. If you set it too tight, at some point, it's just going to stop booting. Right. And then you're going to be in the whole situation. Oh, now I need to clear CMOS. Well, with this, you just don't have to clear CMOS ever again. All, well, almost ever again. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is really awesome. Like I consider it basically like a massive confidence booster for memory overclocking, um, with any motherboard that has this functionality, because you just don't have to be worried about like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm worried it won't post. And then I'll have to like start over or something. And it's just like, no, you just safe mode. Doesn't boot safe mode. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't but safe mode. <laughs> We're like, so yeah, anyway, that's that's it for the video. Um, big thank you to, to Gigabyte for, for sending over all the boards as well as implementing this functionality because it, it's made my life so much better. Um, like seriously, this this functionality is like one of the, the top criteria for me to really like a board because it's just so much easier when the motherboard does, like when, when you have such an easy way to recover from any mistake you make, it, it's like, what more could you ask for? Well, I personally, I'd ask for like a header and a and then a dedicated button instead of having like a rebindable reset button. But um, I like th this is good enough. <laughs> this is this is way better than the alternative of just not having it at all. So um, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. Uh, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, the, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Um, both of those help out immensely with running the channel, allows me to buy test equipment, that kind of thing. So it would be much appreciated if you'd check out the Patreon and the Teespring. And yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks, thanks for watching and goodbye.